So you want to book a cruise. Awesome. Well, I'm going to answer the top questions, the who, what, where, when, why, and how, I guess that's the top six questions, on booking a cruise, and more specifically, booking your first cruise, because there's a lot of things that you have to figure out, and if you've never done it before, it can certainly seem daunting, or it can be sort of overwhelming. So um, I'm going to be cheating. I have my laptop down here. I have some notes. So I'm, if you see me kind of looking this way, it's not like I'm not paying attention. I'm just going to be cheating a little bit and looking up uh, my notes for what I was kind of wanting to uh, wanting to say. So without further ado, and uh, I, I have these in something of an order. So when it comes to taking a cruise, we're going to talk about the who, what, where, when, why, and how uh, of doing so. First and foremost, where. Where do you want to go? Before you pick a cruise line, before you figure out what ship you want to go on, before you figure any of that out, figure out where you want to go. Not all cruises go to the Caribbean. Many of them do, but not all of them do. Maybe you want to go to the Northeast. You can go to like Boston and Nova Scotia and that neck of the woods. Maybe you want to do like an Alaskan cruise. Maybe you want to do a European cruise. Figure out where you want to go because that's also going to help you determine other things like what cruise line you go on, what ship you go on, all that. So figure out very first thing is where. Where do you want to go? It can be, seem like a lot at first, but figure out you want to go someplace warm, someplace cool, or doesn't really matter, Europe, you know, wherever. Figure out where first, because that even in and of itself can be tough. So number one, figure out where. Number two, how long do you want to go on your cruise? So for your first cruise, there are some who will disagree with me. They're allowed to be wrong. For your first cruise, a three to five night cruise is the way to go. Whenever you look at a cruise, they're always measured in nights, but always add one for the amount of days it is. So if you go on a four night cruise, it's five days, four nights that you're on the ship. So like a three to five night cruise is perfect because that will give you just kind of like a little taste of what the whole cruise experience is all about. It's not for everyone. It's for a lot of people. A lot of people really like the whole cruising experience. I love it, but it's not for everyone. So in order to figure out whether it's for you or not, don't force yourself to be on a boat for seven days or 10 days or anything like that. Don't take, a, don't take an 18 night Trans-Pacific cruise as your first one. That's a good like third cruise. But anyway, take a nice short cruise to get started because also it gives you an idea of what the experience is like. Shorter cruises will tend to be on smaller ships. Now, these days, a smaller ship is one that holds 4,000 people, whereas back in the day, a smaller ship was, you know, 2,800 or so, or 3,000. But, you know, cruising's changing. But stick with a smaller ship, stick with a shorter itinerary, do a little bit, because there, it's a totally different way of traveling and a totally different way of spending a vacation. So... Make sure it's, you like it. Make sure it's for you. Take a nice little short cruise. When do you want to go on this cruise? In the summer? Let's go in the winter. Let's go in the fall. When do you want to go? Certain times of the year are going to be more expensive than others. For example, like late May, June, July, beginning of August. That's going to be the more expensive time because that's when everybody's out of school and that's when uh, you know a lot of people will take their vacations. So keep that in mind. You can still totally do it. You're just going to pay a little more for your cruise fare as opposed to going in, say, February or March, or uh, hurricane season. Now, before you freak out, September, October, November is hurricane season for a lot of the Caribbean. It doesn't mean there's going to be rain the entire time. It just means the percentage or the likelihood that there will be some sort of precipitation is higher. Now, these cruise liners that are sailing the seven seas are built to withstand these types of things. And the staff that operate them are always going to do so with your safety in mind. So it's not a bad thing to take a cruise during hurricane season, as long as you're okay with the fact that there's a possibility you may be rocked to sleep, meaning the ship's going to do this while it's going through the water. And, you know, just keep that in mind. I've been on ships when in inclement weather, it's not that bad. Sometimes it's a little, it can be a little uh, jarring if it's, if it's just something that you're not used to, but it's not that bad. These ships are built very, 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 very well. Because again, safety 
really is their number one priority. They want to keep you safe. They don't want you to get on their ship and then it kill you. So definitely don't worry about safety. Don't worry about the ship breaking apart in half. Uh, Titanic will not happen again because we've certainly come a long way in the way of technology and the way ships are designed and so forth. And there's always more lifeboats and so forth than there are people on board. So, uh, you know, sh cruising is very, very safe. Taking cruises is very, very, very safe. So, um, okay, so we've decided when we're going to go. Now we need to pick what cruise line are we going to go with. There's a lot of, there's a handful of cruise lines out there. And for all intents and purposes, they're very similar. Um, you've got your kind of family friendly, something for everyone cruise lines like Royal Caribbean and Norwegian and Carnival. Then you've got your kind of more premier and luxury-esque type cruise lines. That's like your celebrity and princess. Then you've got your kind of boutique cruise lines like Azamara Club Cruises. And I, I can't even think of any other ones. But um, if you're interested in something kind of high-end, you know, not on like Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Princess, Norwegian, any, any of those. If you're interested in a really more exclusive type of cruise, go through a travel agent. They will be able to advise you on what cruise lines offer what options and so forth. I mean, you're certainly going to be paying more for that. So do your research. Look at the different cruise lines that are out there. There's, uh, you know, quite a few and certainly something for everyone there. Me personally, I like Royal Caribbean because they are the most laid back. There's a lot of fun things to do on their ships. And I found just them to be a great overall value for the experience. Um, also, when it comes to these things, talk to people who have gone on cruises before because you'll often find that most of the time, cruisers are sort of loyal to one brand. You'll find the people that are like, oh, we only sail Carnival, we only sail Norwegian, we only sail Royal Caribbean. They'll tell you why, and then you can decide what you want to do for yourself. Um, speaking of talking to people, the next one is who? Who are you going to bring with you? And are you going to bring someone with you? You don't have to bring someone with you. You can totally take a cruise by yourself. I'm actually going to be doing it in June. I'm going on Anthem of the Seas. I'm going to Bermuda. So, uh, and I'll be posting uh, some videos about that when I get back. I'm also going to be doing live Periscope sessions from the ship and from Bermuda. So please follow me on Periscope. It's just periscope.tv slash I am John Bamber. And you can uh, connect with me on Periscope when I go live. Uh, but I'll also be putting up uh, videos here on my YouTube channel and also putting up blogs on my website. So my website is johnbamber.com or iamjohnbamber.com. Either one will take you there. Sorry for the shameless plug. But anyway, back to the questions. So who are you going to take with you if you're going to take someone uh, you know, with you at all or you want to kind of go by yourself? Cruising is a very social means of vacation. So you're definitely going to meet people while you're on the ship especially hanging out by the pool, sitting in the hot tubs on, at, the, uh, at the pool. People love to talk. So you're definitely going to meet people that are on the ship, especially sitting at dinner also. Uh, you know, usually they'll sit you in, uh, if you're with a small group, like two or three people, if you don't get a small table, you're usually going to get put, you might get put at a larger table of like six or eight people. So it's kind of a tradition, something that's kind of happened with cruising for a long time. And it's just a way to sort of meet and mingle with the people that are on the ship. And it's really, really fun. Another sort of who question is, who are you going to book your cruise through? So I am sort of alluded to this a little bit a moment ago, but definitely use a travel agent. Travel agents are always going to have your back, and they're always going to be able to give you kind of the best advice for, uh, you know, things if, if you're not sure what you want to do. They can make suggestions based on what cruise lines, you know, what itineraries, things like that. They can guide you on a lot of these things. They can also sometimes... Also sometimes, what does that even mean? They can usually get you some kind of little perks too. Like you might get some onboard credit to spend on the ship or you might get um, you know, maybe a free tour or you know, a, fr a discount on a shore excursion. Sometimes they can offer you unique perks. So there's good reasons to go through a uh, travel agent. The two that I've used in the past are MEI Travel. They are, folks there are really nice, super wonderful. I have my own actual dedicated agent over there, so I can talk to her whenever I have questions on upcoming trips and so forth. So that's another thing. I really like that level of customer service, so I can, 
I can shoot her an email and say, hey, Stephanie, I need to, uh, I want to change my room. I want to be on the starboard side instead of the port side of the ship. And she can me back, sure, done, no problem. She does it all for me, you know, or whatever it is. So that's really cool. Another sort of way to look at it, if you do like the points and miles thing, uh, United Airlines actually has a cruise division. So if you go to cruises.united.com, you can book a cruise through United and earn mileage plus miles through uh, your booking there. So on my uh, cruise coming up in June on Anthem of the Seas, I booked that through United Cruises. So I'm going to be walking away with some uh, some miles for my travels. So that's going to be pretty cool. That comes with a caveat, though, and I did make a video about that. So check that out here. I'll put a link in the description. But I made a video about booking cruises through uh, United. So check that out. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and probably the biggest one, is why. Why do you want to go on a cruise? And that's easy, because it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Specifically, you know, I just kind of wrote down a couple of reasons why I really love cruising. The biggest one is once you step on the ship, you're on vacation. You could still be sitting in port for six hours before the, the ship sails, you're on vacation. You are waited on and catered to hand and foot, and the, the crew of the ship want you to have a great time. They're gonna do everything in their power to make sure you have a great time. So whatever it is you want, there's a very good chance there's a way they can do it for you or help you out with it. Um, so it's, it's just such a great way to, uh, to be sort of taken care of like that. Cruises will take you places you may not have thought to go. You know, for example, I really want to visit Puerto Rico. Like I'd love to go to San Juan and I'd love to, you know, check that out. But I don't know that I want to spend three, four, five days in Puerto Rico, you know, or I want to go to, I want to go over to Europe and I want to visit Spain and, and France and, you know, Italy. I would love to visit all these places, but I don't know what I would want to do. And I'm sure there's things to do there for a whole week, but I'm not the kind of person that's just going to sort of on a whim go to Rome for a week or, you know, whatever. I'm, that's just not me. So what I would like to do is take a European cruise, stop at a few of these ports and kind of see the best that there is in these places. And then I would know for sure, okay, I really want to go back to Rome. So maybe I'll fly to Rome for a week or, you know, whatever it is. So, um, you know, I'd love to go on a cruise that stops there. I'd love to go on a cruise that stops in, in Puerto Rico, you know, or, or Cuba now we're doing cruising to Cuba. So that's another thing I would love to do. So all these places that I might not really want to go for like an extended period of time because I've never been there. I want to go and experience them sort of a little, little chunk. And then once I decide, or once I have that experience and say, okay, I really want to go and do this again, then I'll go back and do a longer time. You know, maybe, you know, take a cruise that leaves out of San Juan and spend three days in San Juan beforehand or something. I don't know, but it's, it's a great way to see little parts of the world without sort of being locked into going for a longer period of time. Also, on that whole thing of seeing places, you can do these short excursions or these tours that leave from the ship and you book them through the cruise line and they are perfectly well organized to show you the best of what's there or you know give you that certain experience. And because it's organized through the cruise line, if you run late, the ship will wait for you. Whereas if you just get off the ship and do your own thing, if the ship is leaving at four o'clock, for example, it's going to leave at four o'clock and that's it. They're gone. They do not wait for you. You could do a, do a YouTube search or a Google search for, you know, cruise ship left me behind and you'll see some, you'll see some crazy stuff. That's the only downside. Just make sure you're back on the ship before they tell you, you have to be back on the ship. You know, my general rule of thumb is an hour. So if the ship is leaving at four, I'm back on by three. That's just me. Also, just the ships themselves. There's so much to do. So you can do as little or as much as you want. If your thing is just, is just like, I want to go on the ship and sit by the pool and drink margaritas, do it. If you want to get on the ship and do every single activity that's available, do it. If you want to do some mix of the two, do it. You can totally do it. Most of what you can do on the ship is included in the fare, you know, in, in what you pay for the ship anyway. So there's a good chance that these things aren't going to cost you anything. Sometimes there's an added fee for like a wine tasting or something like that, but it's usually, you know, 20 bucks or something. It's not that bad. But for the most part, when you get on, there's so much to do without you having to spend any more money. Uh, that's actually all I've got. So, you know, I hope this was helpful and I hope this uh, sort of gives you a little insight as to, you know, what things to think about when you go to book a cruise. 
There's a couple of really great YouTube channels and blogs and so forth that I would recommend you check out if you're thinking about doing cruising. So number one is on YouTube here, look up Morgan's Very Unofficial Travel Guides. He's just a dude that takes trips, uh, usually cruises or like goes to theme parks and so forth, and just posts his experiences in, in, uh, in the form of kind of vlogs here on YouTube. I really love his work and I, uh, I, I can't recommend him anymore. He's a great guy too. So uh, checking out Morgan's Very Unofficial Travel Guides. Uh, that's here on YouTube. Another, another great YouTube channel is Sea Cruisers, just S-E-A space Cruisers, C-R-U-I-S-E-R-S. -S. Uh, it's just, it's two sisters who take cruises and they vlog everything. So they vlog going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They do v vlogs of, uh, you know, taking shore excursions, touring the ships, sail away. So they, they're a way that you can kind of live vicariously through other people in between when you take cruises or if you're kind of wondering what it's like to take a cruise, watch some of their videos. They've been on a ton of cruises. They've been a lot of different lines as well. So if you want to see sort of what the inside of the ships look like, you know, how kind of carnival ships might look different from Norwegian ships, might look different from Royal Caribbean ships, Sea Cruisers videos are really great ones to watch. So definitely check those out too. When it comes to blogs, check out royalcaribbeanblog.com. Uh, that is a blog, if you couldn't guess, about Royal Caribbean, and it's run by a guy named Matt who is extremely knowledgeable and very, very fun. Really great content up there about Royal Caribbean. He's posting stuff there pretty much every day. It's sort of an unofficial news source for the, uh, you know, for the line, but he does Periscopes and Facebook Live sessions all the time. So if you follow him on, fa on Periscope, it's uh, the RCL blog on Periscope or uh, Royal Caribbean blog on Facebook. He does Facebook Live sessions on Tuesday and Saturdays, and then Periscope sessions practically every night. And you can get on there and just type your questions in the chat. He's a really great guy, really fun to watch, and he's really, really knowledgeable on uh, Royal Caribbean stuff. So uh, definitely follow him on there and check out those Periscope sessions. I've learned so much just from sort of being a part of that. Um, you know, if you decide you really like cruising and you want to get really into it, definitely sign up for the loyalty program that is uh, matched up with your cruise line if you go with, uh, you know, whomever you go with. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very, very much for watching. I know it was kind of a longer video here, but uh, if you have any questions on taking cruises, f feel free to post a comment or send me a message and I'd be happy to uh, do my best to answer them. And also check out those YouTube channels that I mentioned to you, Morgan's Very Unofficial Travel Guides and Sea Cruisers, and then the uh, royalcaribbeanblog.com. Check that out for great information. And uh, as always, if you like this, like and share it. And thank you so much again. I'll see you. Oh, 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 one more thing. Um, no, that's it. See ya.